Good morning, hello everyone, how are you? Uh, I am back. So today is the third and last installment of something that was unexpected. Uh, last June, I put together some of my guitars to take pictures of to get ready for a guitar gallery that I was putting together. And at that time, it was all Les Paul alike. So I called it Single Cut Collection. And then last month I did something similar with all the super strats or uh, you know the double cut guitars. So continue, continuing on with that, today is the uh, uh, the no cut collection. Um, actually that's not entirely true because I was busting these out. Uh, some of these guitars that actually could be falling into one of those other collection guitars that I have. So anyhow, uh, let's uh, take a look, huh? Okay, we are back and right now I am looking at ESP LTD EXP 200 guitar. So this is a, obviously, it's a Gibson Explorer copy put out by ESP LTD way years ago. And this is pre-Gibson lawsuit, so basically the Explorer shape is uh, genuine. It's not the uh, pointy stuff that they sell right now, uh, like the Dan Jacobs signature Explorer model that they have. So anyhow, you got the hockey stick headstock. Since the last time I showed this guitar, it has now been outfitted with EMG81 and EMG60. Just like the James Hetfield guitar. Anyhow, um, there you go. So that's that. It's got a flat, dark gray finish. Really nice guitar. I'm a Explorer fan, so really love having that guitar. I picked this guitar up so cheap, you will not believe it. Of course, I got it used. So there you go. And then um, next, I'm going to actually zoom out a little bit so they go in the shot together. So. These two guitars that you see, these are Dean signature guitars of band Trivium. One on the left, right here, CBV, it's a Corey Bolo, he's the uh, lead guitar player for band Trivium, the band that I love a lot actually. So this is a signature guitar that they uh, made for Corey back when he was uh, still endorsing Dean. Of course, uh, since then he has left and now it has a signature series through Jackson. So anyhow, the reason why I love this V is obviously it's very different than your traditional traditional V. Uh, you know, the headstock you see got nice, you know, I, I, I don't know about nice, but it is definitely different, right? And at the 12th fret you got the Trivium logo. By the way, Trivium's new um, record in waves comes out next week so I'm uh, very pumped about that so anyhow here you go and it, even the pickups are signature Corey pickup that Dean made obviously they're not anything special because Corey has moved on and no longer use those pickups now those pickups actually sound pretty decent I'll tell you that and there you go again some more cutouts on the bottom that makes the V very very special and what I dig about this guitar I'll tell you is the um, the very pronounced neck profile it's it's like really it really thin towards the edge and then very meaty right here in the middle it's a V shape really like it there you go pick this guitar up really cheap brand new at uh, Guitar Center they had it on special with hard case and it was under six hundred dollars if you can believe that so there you go that's that you know uh, going back to the pickup thing you know it's it's so when these artists are endorsed by a certain company you know they say all the right things right hey you know I specially designed this pickup and guitar you know blah 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 you know and then you know moment the endorsement deal ends it's like nothing has ever happened right so if you were in love with them so much, why, you know, it, it, it's just a little odd to me. But anyhow, that's that. And sitting next to it 
is the Madhifi, the other guy in Trivium. Again, big ass headstock. I mean, these Dean guitar headstocks are just crazy. Crazy big. Anyhow, so there's a little uh, more logo looking thing. Not focusing correctly there. There you go. The bridge pickup on this guitar to me is a little muddy. Anyhow, um, there you go. Rising Sun. Basically all the ML shape that's made famous by Timebag Daryl. Now, unlike the Corey guitar, this has a more traditional feeling neck profile. Obviously, again, Matt is now with Gibson and uses Gibson Les Paul Custom primarily. So there you go. Nothing special there. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, so sitting next to that is, speaking of uh, Timebag Daryl, here is your Timebag Razorback V. I traded in my Epiphone Explorer, Gothic Explorer, that had 18 volt EMG mod to get this guitar. It was an even swap with this guy. What is cool about this guitar, the, the headstock is, I mean, really big. You look at, you know, compared with a hand, that is a wicked big looking, you know, pitchfork kind of a headstock. There you go. So you get the uh, razor blade logo at the 12th fret. Now this guitar has a pretty terrible pinstriping work. I don't know if the camera will catch it, but it's not very well done, I'll tell you that. Has a lot of imperfection. Um, same with the Corey V. This has that Dean uh, neck profile um, V, hard V. So um, again, really, really nice to play with. Love that guitar. So if I line up all three Deans together, you see the just the sheer size of headstock right there. Just large headstocks. So there you go, and if I zoom out, hey, look at that. So there you go, and then another Dean. I actually didn't purposely put them up like this. Anyhow, so um, here's Dean Mustaine VMNT V. One of my very favorite guitars. It's just flat, uh, it's just a shiny black finish, nothing. Uh, it's actually reflecting my rug here, so. Let me go like that to make it look a little bit better. So there you go. V. Got the Seymour Duncan Livewire Dave Mustaine signature pickups. These I dig a lot. Uh, matter of fact, I'm, me personally, I love these pickups more than Blackouts or the uh, EMG pickups. But that's just me, so don't flame me. Here you go. Nice, nice, good stuff. It's got the uh, Dave Mustaine neck profile, so you don't get the uh, the hard V profile that I talked about previously. But, I mean, that is a wicked looking guitar. Weapon of mass destruction, if you really want to talk about it. Now, what's cool about this guitar, I'll tell you, is that, um, you know, traditionally you get the you know, shredder guitar, then you get the, um, you know, the rhythm guy guitar, chug, 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 right? That guitar is, you know, so versatile, great for guys that can really shred, and it's also extremely awesome for just, you know, that palm muted uh, chug uh, rhythm playing. I just really great guitar. I, by the way, I picked this guitar, with, you know, it sells for about thousand, right? And if it's on a sale, it's like 900 bucks. I got that guitar from Guitar Center for $300. Because the manager was an idiot and he had it on sale for 300 <laughs> So I snatched it right away. Okay, moving on to my one of my other favorite guitars. Look at that. It is a BC Rich Bitch Double Neck. The neck on the left hand side is a 12 string and to the right would be the um, 6 string. 
and they have Rockfield Mafia pickups. Again, these pickups I love so much, I actually went out and bought a PC Rich Mockingbird, which I'll show you later on. Because uh, it's a pain in the ass to strap this guitar on every time to uh, play. Solid mahogany. Uh, it's got basically from the tip of the headstock all the way down to the bottom of the body. It's one piece of wood. So um, the resonance is just killer. And, um, you know, I tell you what, back in the 80s when I grew up, you know, listening to hair metal and LA metal or what have you, I mean, Lita Ford was um, sporing this guitar around and just, you know, close your eyes forever with Ozzy. I mean, that just, oh, <laughs> I was uh, amazed when I uh, picked this guitar up. I mean, I didn't think I would have such a nice guitar. This guitar I bought for brand new, including hard case, under $900. Get that. <laughs> I mean, this is one of those guitars that I will never part with. It's a very special guitar. Very, very special. All right, so we'll get the double neck out of the way. And it's a really heavy beast as well. All right, then um, I get a lot of views on the video that I have with this guitar. It's BC Rich Draco Ghost Flame. So basically it's a V guitar, right? I'm really glad the headstock is the way it looks. It's not the uh, the ball sack headstock. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but there's a uh, BC Rich headstock that looks like this. <laughs> looks like a fucking nuts are hanging off. Anyhow, so there you go. Look at that uh, flame job on the headstock all the way down. Um, these are made with plastic, by the way, so I don't like that a lot. I don't like but ebony uh, fretboard all the way down. Whew, good stuff. Uh, these are that that is a Rockfield. Um, oh, it's not uh, Mafia. It's a Rock uh, Rockfield Fat Ass pickup. And I did a video with this guitar for those of you who want to hear what it sounds like. But I mean, it is work of art right here. I mean, look at all that body work. Smooth out, you know, smooth curve right here and just the way it all goes down. Just a, just, just beautifully crafted guitar. A lot of, you know, it, it's an acquired taste, I guess. So some people may not like the way that thing is shaped, but whoo, that is a nice guitar. Got this guitar cheap too. <laughs> okay, so we'll put that away right here. All right, let's then move on to second deck over here. Now this, I get a lot of views on this video as well. This is uh, ESP LTD, Alexi Leho. Oh, by the way, before I start talking about this guitar. So, you know, the, these guitars that are not single cuts or double cuts or what have you, these are, you know, oddly shaped, which means I cannot get them to stand up correctly without having actual guitar stands. But I don't own many guitar stands, so you know, for me to prop them up on the couch, they're all sitting at 45 degree angle, as you see. <laughs> so here you go. So here's a Lexi Leho LTD 600. Um, as I said in the video where I introduced the guitar, I spent 150 bucks for this guitar used. It has some issues, right? I mean, um, right here is where I have issues had some sort of a uh, thing put on by the previous guy and it's chemically bonded with the top of the guitar finish so I can't remove it actually. I tried the WD-40, Goo Gone, you know, anything and it's, uh, it's a no-go. But that's okay. And EMG HZ stock pickup that it came with. Really nice. Sawtooth inlay. Nice guitar. Looks like a well, you know, rocket ship taking off. It's a very, very nice guitar. Love it. Now, I'm going to show you my ESP Blackie, which is right there later on. But the difference with this guitar, um, because of the uh, Jackson lawsuit, they can't make the V. ESP cannot produce guitar to be sold in U.S. with the, um, you know, similar body dimension as the Randy Rose V, which is right here. Um, so this bottom wing is much more pronounced than the ESP and Edwards version of the uh, Leho guitar right there. So 
<clears throat> there you go. Nice, nice stuff. Okay, this guitar, again, very special to me. It's a Jackson Randy Rhodes with the uh, Duncan 59 and uh, JV. And uh, I tell you what, um, this was my first V guitar. So I, I you know, it's, I love it, love it a lot. And, you know, Randy Rhodes, I definitely, um, is one of, one, one of my favorite guitar players ever, if not the best in my in my book. Anyhow, so whoo, love that guitar. All right, and another guitar that I get a lot of uh, views on is the James Hetfield the Signature Snakebite guitar, Snakebite Explorer, with the snake logo, blah 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 blah, and right down to the wicked headstock. Now, when this guitar was first um, available for sale, it came with the, just a straight up EMG 81 and 60 combo. Just like what Heffield has used for God knows how many goddamn years. Um, since then, uh, EMG did come out with the James Heffield signature pickup set. Which I guess they were saying it's a modified 81 and 60 customi customized with uh, James's input or what have you. Um... I will most likely end up putting those in here. Not because I'm, you know, I'm a diehard James Hetfield uh, fanboy, which I am, but um, not for the reason that I worship James. It's more or less, um, you know, I got the signature guitar, um, might as well get it as close, even though obviously history tells us James didn't get, um, you know, all those epic classic Metallica albums, you know, they weren't done with the James Hetfield pickup set. They were done with the EMG 8160, so you know, staying true to the tone would be keeping them in here. But since I got the latest signature thing, signature guitar, you know, I might as well. But I tell you what, this guitar, very light. Picked it up yesterday to, uh, I, I picked it up out of the case to, you know, for, for this video shoot, and I was just shocked by how light this guitar is. Even with all that body, all that mass, the wood. So anyhow, there you go. Really nice stuff. Trying to get a shot of that. There you go. Alright, so next to it is my PC Rich Mockingbird. I actually got this guitar because I love the sound of Rockfield Mafia pickup that I had in the uh, double neck I showed you earlier. So I wanted a guitar that has uh, Mafia in it. And this thing... Um, jumped out at me. And it's got a beautiful quilt top, you see, and all these switches give you a uh, different very very um, various tone palette. So you don't you're you're not just stuck with two pickup combination. There is inverse, parallel and all kinds of different things. Um, again from the top of the headstock all the way down to the body it's a one piece of wood which is just awesome if you look at if you uh, ask me, ebony fretboard, diamond inlay. Now, if you pick up this month issue of Guitar World magazine, you can see the guy, the guitar player, I don't know his name, uh, from Black Veil Brides, holding this very guitar, same finish, same model, same everything, uh, on the cover of this month's uh, Guitar World magazine. Kind of cool. Picked up this guitar last year from Sam Ash. Again, pretty cheap. There you go. Mockingbird. Eh, and you know, Slash every now and then uses a Mockingbird. Although that's not the reason why I got the guitar. Anyhow, it's a very cool axe. Okay, here's a, um, a very uh, popular guitar uh, among people that watch my videos. Here is a ESP Edwards. Alexi Leho signature V. This again, weapon of mass destruction. Shove it up your ass. I mean, it's got shine. You know, the 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 sharp pointy ends just tips everywhere. Headstock is pointy. Look at the top wing. Look at the bottom wing. It's just just out of control. Got the Seymour Duncan blackouts with the um, decibel boost right. There, uh, no tone knob, and uh, Floyd Rose uh, pinstriping. You got scalloped the frets right here. 
at the top um, four frets. And again, like I said earlier, this is a true to the actual body design size of the uh, Leho signature. Let me uh, move over here. And um, so compared to the LTD that's sold here in uh, North America, the lower horn is smaller size than the LTD model. So it looks actually a lot more like the Randy Rhodes V. And you know, you guys, uh, Alexi Leho fanboys, you know the history of how Alexi came to ESP. His uh, Jackson Randy Rhodes that he was using at the time, you know, got stolen at a gig. And um, when he called the Japan Jackson, and uh, you know, they said we could get your guitar, but it's going to be three, four months. And he jumped the ship over to ESP because they were able to get a guitar for him within just a matter of days. And that's how he. Uh, Started playing ESPs and uh, there you go. Look at that thing. That thing is just epic. Great guitar. All right, moving right along. I got this guitar uh, used again from a uh, kid in San Diego. It's a Schecter. I don't own many Schecters. Matter of fact, my other Schecter is on sale right now on Craigslist in Los Angeles area. It's the uh, Omen Six with the Seymour Duncan blackouts. If anybody's interested, go take a look at it and buy it from me. I'm trying to get rid of it. Anyhow, here's another Schecter. It's a Sinister Gates Custom. So it's got the um, set neck construction. Um, I forget what the pickup names are. Um, those are Seymour Duncan, uh, something like a Destroyer or God, I, I forget the name of the pickup, so don't don't kill me. Anyhow, I had some issues with that Floyd Rose when I bought it, um, but since then I got it reseated. It's all good. Everything is gold. With the pinstripe job, you know, it's very nice. And when I look at that guitar, I go, maybe that guitar should have been included in my uh, double cut collection, right? Because it's kind of similar. And if you look at that body shape, it's actually reverse of the Mockingbird. You see Mockingbird's lower, uh, what is that, horn there, right there? And you see the top horn on this guitar, and the way the bo uh, body goes like that versus like this. So um, they're actually just like this, <laughs> flipped over, copy. Anyhow, so there is a Sinister Gates Custom again. Um, Another very popular guitar on my YouTube video channel. A lot of you guys love this guitar. And, um, you know, I, when I bought that guitar, I wasn't the hugest fan of Avenged Sevenfold. But since then, I uh, dig the band a lot. Love those guys. So anyhow, hey, so there you go. Here's my um, non-single cuts or double cuts. Um, oddly shaped guitar collection. There you go. I got a couple uh, special videos coming up for you guys, so um, definitely stay tuned, and I will hope to see you guys soon again. Until next time, you guys all take care.